What's going on, you guys? It's Keenan Briggs. We're back with another spotlight interview type of conversation with um, athletes that are competing at the 2020 Leap Fest. It's coming up really soon. It's coming up in less, I think, two weeks, uh, January 4th at Mata Day High School. Today, we're going to be talking to John Gibbs Jr. Um, out of Oceanside. I want to make sure I get the score right. Um, I know him from the Dream Team, but um, he's a super talented athlete, and um, the second he requests to join in, then we'll get started. But um, overall, he's a talented athlete. I've been watching him now for, I want to say, six years or so, um, watching him as that little guy jumping. But here he is now, and let's add him into our chat. So what's going on, man? Like, how, how's everything? How's the season going so far? I know you had a track meet in San Diego. How's it everything going? Uh, yeah, it's been going pretty good so far. We've had a couple meets so far, uh, SDSU and the one last week. And then, uh, you know, just trying to get back into the groove of things, basically, you know. Yeah. Getting ready to shake some rust off and things like that. And then just getting ready to hit it hard once okay. uh, outdoor comes up, yeah. So for those who don't know you who are, introduce yourself, uh, talk about your background and, and the base that you specialize in. So yeah, uh, I'm John Gibbs, a senior at Oceanside High School right now. Uh, last year, junior year, I was uh, Avocado East uh, long jump, triple jump champion and uh, CIF uh, Division Two triple jump cha champion, yeah. And uh, top 10 finalist in uh, state last year, so. Nice. That was pretty good. And then um, I do long jump, triple jump, pole vault, high jump, and then whatever my coach uh, throws me in, I guess. Yeah. Maybe like that, yeah. So what what got you into pole vault and triple jump? I know most jumpers are like, I'm not doing pole vault. Yeah. And those who are in pole vault are like, I'm not going to triple jump. Like, how would you get into both of those? Uh, Yeah, that definitely. I mean, the jump just came natural. Without my dad being the jump coach and my sister doing – all my sisters basically doing jumps and things like that. Mm -hmm. But then uh, my dad did pole vault when he was in high school, and then uh, he had the school record over at Oceanside. Okay. And I know he always used to uh, talk smack on me and things like that. <laughs> but when I got up there, so, I mean, I guess that just got me into it and uh, feeling my drive to get better in that event, uh, along with doing triple jump and things like that. And then it just came along perfectly uh, last year went 14 and obviously beat his record so okay now i can hold that title above my head <laughs> things like that yeah that's really good and so like i've seen you around track meets the whole time i've seen you when you were like little um i think when i started with my club team was in 2013 so you might have been uh how old were you in 2013 that might have been uh yeah you were yeah i was probably about 11 11? 10 or 11 or so yeah yeah um, so I seen you on the track and I'm like, he's going to be good. And then fast forward, now we're here. And, um, one thing I do want to correct is I did say that you were already committed to Sac State. So I was incorrect with that. Is that you went on a visit to Sac State. Yeah. Yeah. That's, okay. uh, that was about it. Yeah. Just still on committed right now. Just trying to wait on it for, you know, that right time. Sac State, it was definitely a blessing to take a visit over there and things like mm -hmm. that. It was a beautiful campus and then coaching staff and all that is nice so um yeah they're they're definitely in their consideration and things like that and so let's talk about your personal best right um so you're at 47 four and, a, and three quarters yeah for sure yeah. so that's a great mark leading into your senior year right because you yeah. throw jump you see feet of improvements each year so are we expecting 50 this year what's going on uh yeah i mean that's the big goal i remember just being like a sixth or seventh grade and talking about how I'm going to go 50 uh, my freshman year. But obviously that's always shooting for the clouds and things like that. You know, life gets in the way and things like that. But mm -hmm. it's all good. But, yeah, definitely this year, uh, senior year, big goal was in uh, 50 uh, pretty – hopefully pretty kind of early in the outdoor season, you know, mm -hmm. just to definitely turn some heads and get things rolling. But uh, don't really want to force nothing too much. But, yeah, again, 50 is definitely a big goal for this upcoming year. Okay. And so with all the events you do, what do you, what do you feel is obviously your strongest event? And then what's your most favorite event to do? Uh, my strongest event is obviously a uh, triple jump. You know, I mean, that's probably falls along with my favorite too, along with pole vault. 
triple it's like you know not too many people do it and like just with the my technique and as long as i've been doing it people just see it and they're like oh how do you do that and things and i'm like i don't even know myself you know <laughs> it just comes natural but like you know it's it's always something to see like it's unique to me along with pole vault too it's like not too many people are doing it because like they're like going up 14 feet in the air with the stick like that's just nonsense but you know yeah. things like that drive me and I just like push myself off of things like that, and then you know just having fun along with it, with the way that all the experiences that I've had and my teammates and things like that. Yeah, do you can you see yourself doing that in college? Maybe a decathlete? Would you be up open to even giving up triple jump if you're doing a decathlon? Or... Yeah, that's that's kind of been like one of the biggest questions that I've got from a lot of coaches and friends and family and things like that. Uh, mm -hmm. Is obviously doing the decathlon. I mean. Um, if it if it's gonna get me the farthest, uh, I'll most likely be susceptible to doing it and probably doing like triple on the side and things like that, hoping my uh, triple grows so I'm able to do a uh, triple for full time and things like that. Yeah. But I mean, um, I wouldn't mind like being a the athlete. Those are kind of in my eyes like the best athletes on the track, you know, they yeah. all around the field and track and things like that. But like, uh, yeah, I could see myself doing it. I mean. If I want to be the best athlete, I got to chase, like, you know, the biggest things, and that would probably be one of them, so. Yeah. yeah. So how long have you been doing track? I feel like you were born on the track. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's kind of always the joke. Like, I came out of the womb, triple jumping, and things like that. But, uh, yeah, I've been doing track for about, say, about 12, 12 years now. Okay. Yeah. Man. And so talk about, you know, the high school team, talk about – the dream team, your dad, your dad's club team, um, and just what you learned from both types of programs. Yeah, so definitely uh, starting now on the dream team, you know, it gets me rolling like, oh, yeah, this is what track feels like. And mm -hmm. just being able to, like, get to the Junior Olympics and competing with other kids my age gives me that sense of, like, uh, just competition in general. And then uh, my dad being the track coach over at the high school, too, it just gives me that sense of, like, uh, like, oh yeah, I want, I want, I can't wait till I get up to here and compete with all the big boys and things like that. And now that I'm on the high school, it's like a big team, as to where like the dream team, we're a team, and then everybody's like spread out and things that like different ages, but age groups and things like that. But now in high school, it's like everybody's against everybody, no matter what grade or age and things like that. Yeah. Hmm. So talk about you know um, having a dad as, as a coach. You know, like, how do you separate, you know, being a dad and a son and then separate coach and know when to switch gears, you know, and listen to him as a coach versus a dad? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely a blessing and a curse, you know. Some days it's like uh, he's able to understand me, like, unlike a great coach, he knows, like, how I am. And then he knows, like, if I'm not performing at my best or I'm not giving my 100%. Mm -hmm. But then it's like, there's also times, like, you know, as, like, some athletes would tell their coach, like, oh, I'm sick today when they're really at their friend's house or yeah. out doing something <laughs> else. You know, I can't really slide with all that. Yeah. But, I mean, like, it's it gives me a better feel. Like, he's able to understand with me. And then we kind of build off of things, like, uh, like he knows what I need to do. And I know that, like, he he's giving me his best interest, basically, you know. And then um, – it's it's easier, you know, like uh, I get that firsthand coaching, you know, if I just walk over to his room and say, oh, yeah, like, look at this, <laughs> like that. But uh, it's definitely harder being a kid's coach, you know, you're expected of a lot and a lot of people are asking you, like, oh, how do you do this or how do I get my this thing and better? And I'm like, man, I'm trying to learn myself, too. But yeah. you know, it feels good to be out there and be a role model and things like that. But I do appreciate my dad being a coach probably going to be one of the biggest things leaving off to college is uh getting that sense of actually having a coach on me rather than my dad you know I gotta yeah. push myself in some ways and allow my coach to coach me you know yeah. get used to a new technique and things like that yeah I always thought about that you know even with like Tara Davis and how that dynamic works but um but it's pretty good yeah. so let's talk about Lee Fest so you come to Lee Fest and I believe you were at Lee Fest the last two years too right uh yeah, I was there last year, yeah. Okay, were you there the year before? Uh I don't believe so. Okay. 
Yeah. I know the, I know the team was there before, but I think you came last yeah. year. Um, so talk about the experience. Let people know about what it's like um, compared to other track meets. Let them know what it's what it's like. Oh yeah, it was it was definitely it was something different, you know, just coming out there and then like uh, obviously it was cold last year, so I'm coming yeah. out. I'm just like oh, it's gonna be another one of those meets, but then yeah. I turn to my right and then I see Will Clay and I'm like oh snap, that, like that's one of my idols and thinking that. And I'm walking towards him, and I look to my left, and I see Omar Crowdog, and I'm like, oh, my, it just keeps on getting better. You know, that definitely fueled me for, like, oh, yeah, once I get to my events, I'm, like, about to pop off and things like that. Mm -hmm. And then just competing with, like, other uh, pros and things like that and all the other guys trying to shoot for Olympic marks. It just definitely had that environment of, like, high competition, you know, big expectations with uh, a lot of good people there. So that was definitely fun. And then after, again, a couple picks with them. And, and buying some merch and things like that. It was great. What did you end up buying? I know uh, you have a lot I of got, stuff. Yeah, I got I got a couple of the um Elevate, you know, what Clay's brand. I got a couple of his yeah. shirts. And then um I think I bought a pair of spikes because you guys had the uh Nike tent over there. Yeah, the uh, had a, Yeah, I had the yeah. bought a couple of spikes and then I obviously I got a Leaf Fest shirt and that was pretty cool. I still rocked that in my practices and things. You gotta get a picture like so I can uh, post it on my social media. Oh yeah, for sure. We'll have, we'll have all the little kids out there supporting that. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, that's that's pretty much it. I wanted to just kind of get to know you because I'm not first of actually talking to you, even though I've seen you the last long time. But um, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, but I'm I'm very proud of you. I've been watching your progression. You know, and you and your dad have been doing some great things, and um, a, a lot of athletes from Dream Team are coming to this year's mm -hmm. event. Oh yeah, we that, that just shows yeah. love. You know. Yeah. Um, so I, I really enjoy that. So let let people know that I guess the last thing is what your overall goals are for this season. Um, and then obviously is to go to college, but you know, take this skill to college. But um, what are you looking to accomplish this season to feel satisfied with your high school career? Uh, I mean, the overall goal is just finishing off my senior season healthy. You know, obviously big intention is to hit that 50 mark, but, uh, Things don't fall. I mean, everything works out at the end. So just finishing the season healthy, making it to state, you know, reoccurring my titles and things like that, and just making my last memories in high school one to remember for a long time. Because I know just having the feeling of my dad being a coach, I feel like I've been in high school for like eight years now, <laughs> being around all the boys and things like that. But yeah, now it actually being my last year, you know, it's it's gonna hit me hard. So just making those memories and just going on in stride. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess one more question as we're talking, but um, what would you say to athletes who are coming for the first time or um, the young athletes who say, well, these athletes are really, really good. I'm not that good. What would you say to them to kind of calm their nerves and just get out there still? You know, I've, I've definitely been in their shoes before. I still think about it to this day, like, oh, this guy just committed here, and I'm just like, I'm still sitting here at home. But um, you just got to <laughs> stay patient and work hard and, always believe you know there's gonna be days where it's like you don't feel like you could do it no more or it's just not fun no more not in your interest but you definitely got pushed through that because at the end of the day you're gonna like the decision you made and you're gonna make awesome memories along the way even though if track's not gonna be your career or the thing you continue to do is definitely gonna be a thing you turn back on and be happy that you continued in that that's really good it feels like every interview i do with the athletes i, I learn some more stuff because you guys are so uh, mature and just so smart within the sport and you guys understand what's happening so very good I'm very impressed and I'm pretty sure I'll be impressed again from, probably from a short approach or whatever um, when you compete but i um, looking forward to seeing you compete again this year and watching you throughout the whole season and pole vaulting and running and doing everything you do on the track so yes, sir. Appreciate, you, really coach. appreciate it yeah appreciate it thank you all right I'll see you uh, January 4th yes sir all right